This is the moment when a 91-year-old man was pushed onto the tracks at Marble Arch Station seconds before a London Underground train was due to pull into the platform. But Sir Robert Malpas, a retired businessman, was not the only person the pusher targeted back in April 2018. Tobias French had also been pushed on the platform at Tottenham Court Road Station. The man responsible for both attacks was 47-year-old Paul Crossley, who suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. I'm Chris Summers, I'm a crime reporter, and this week we're looking at mental health attacks and homicides. This is uh, Marble Arch Station, which is at one end of Oxford Street, and it was here where uh, Sir Robert Malpass, a 91-year-old <coughs> businessman, was uh, pushed uh, onto the tracks. A teacher leapt down to haul Sir Robert off the tracks and was praised for his bravery by a judge. The court heard Crossley consciously and deliberately sought out a more vulnerable victim who happened to be a 91-year-old stranger waiting for a train on the platform at Marble Arch. Sir Robert spent a week in hospital with a head injury and a fractured pelvis. Crossley's other victim, Tobias French, was a professional sportsman. When Crossley pushed him on the platform at Tottenham Court Road, he managed to keep his balance and did not fall onto the tracks. Miraculously, both men pushed by Paul Crossley survived the attacks. But why did Crossley attack two complete strangers? It emerged he had failed to take the medication which kept his condition under control. Schizophrenia is a mental illness that occurs in around 1% of the population. It usually comes on roughly around um, early 20s. And it's a lifelong illness that, co that comes in relapses and remissions. Um, and so a relapse is a period of weeks or months when somebody's psychotic and a remission is a period in between when they're relatively well. So a state of psychosis is when people have symptoms where they, they struggle to differentiate reality from fantasy. So the most common kind of symptoms are delusions, which are false beliefs, or hallucinations, which are usually in the form of hearing voices. Paranoid schizophrenia is the most common type of schizophrenia, and as the name suggests, it is associated with paranoia. So typical paranoid delusions would be that random strangers want to hurt the sufferer or want to kill them or are watching them or that they're being poisoned or followed. And sometimes it's, it's a general feeling of most people and sometimes they focus on very specific individuals, sometimes strangers, sometimes people close to them like family members. Crossley had also splurged 600 pounds on crack cocaine. The court heard Crossley began to hear voices and was getting paranoid when he was on the platform and remembered thinking, I'm going to hurt someone. His paranoia was linked to the fact that drug dealers who he owed money to were threatening him. While people do occasionally jump in front of trains to commit suicide or fall onto the tracks accidentally, pushing incidents are mercifully rare. Most of London's tube stations have no barriers and Transport for London says retrofitting them would be too expensive. The eastern end of the Jubilee Line, which was opened in 1999, has protected barriers along the platform, as does the new Elizabeth Line, which is due to come into operation next year. A protective barrier could have saved the life of Sonia Burgess, a human rights lawyer who was pushed to her death at King's Cross. So it was here in October 2010 at uh, King's Cross that uh, Sonia Burgess, a human rights lawyer, and uh, her friend, Centurion Kanagasingam, who was better known as Nina, they were standing here on the platform having come back from a, uh, a port GP appointment. Both were transgender women, and Sonia was trying to help Nina to obtain gender reassignment treatment. Suddenly, Nina pushed Sonia Burgess onto the tracks. She was hit by a train. After pushing Sonia to her death, Nina turned to other passengers on the platform and simply said, I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I surrender. Nina suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and was hearing voices in her head. 
Just before her death, Sonia told friends Nina was suffering from psychotic episodes and was in danger of imploding. A note was found in Nina's rucksack which said she was broke, depressed and suffering from gender dysphoria. Nina was cleared of murder but convicted of manslaughter due to diminished responsibility and was jailed for life in December 2011. 18 months later, she was found dead in her cell at Belmarsh Prison, having taken her own life. But what prompts schizophrenics to kill complete strangers or friends and relatives for that matter? There's lots of different mechanisms or lots of different reasons. I think the most common and the most simplest for us to understand would be somebody suffering something like a command hallucinations. So they're sitting there on the platform and they hear a voice in their head that's telling them to push that person. And there's usually a delusional belief connected to them, like that person's going to kill you or going to kill your family. You have to, you know, preemptively strike and push them. So that would be probably the most common scenario. Only a very small proportion of people with paranoid schizophrenia actually end up attacking people, including strangers. In fact, it's far more common for somebody with schizophrenia to either hurt themselves in the form of self-harm or suicide or uh, to be the victim of crime. Another man suffering from schizophrenia who ended the life of a complete stranger was Christopher Clunis. In 1992, he stabbed Jonathan Zito on the platform at Finsbury Park tube station. Clunis had stopped taking his medication and on the 10th of December 1992, he failed to turn up for an appointment with a psychiatrist at Fryan Hospital in North London. It wasn't until a week later that an emergency mental health assessment team was put together and began trying to track him down. But it was too late. When it opened in 1851, this building in Barnet, North London, was a lunatic asylum. In its heyday in the Victorian era, two and a half thousand people uh, were stayed here. And among the patients was one of the suspects in the Jack the Ripper case. And it was here that Christopher Clunis was uh, treated in the 1990s. Uh, it closed down in 1993 and has since been converted into luxury housing. Uh, one of the uh, people who lives here reportedly is uh, a member of One Direction. Julian Hendy runs a charity called 100 Families, which is so called because around 100 or 120 families a year in the UK lose a loved one to mental health homicide. We often hear from you know, health services that the mental health related homicides are rare, but you know, there's a hundred or so a year. So there's 20% of all homicides are mental health related. I think that's an opportunity for health services and people to intervene. Um, my dad was killed by a stranger, a man with serious mental illness who thought um, he was paranoid and delusional and he thought that my dad was involved with Prince Charles and George Bush to clone his children and give them sex changes. Um, these are people with clear delusions. In 2009, the Mental Health Act was passed in the UK. It removed a loophole, which meant that people with untreatable personality disorders could be subjected to community treatment orders, which enforced the taking of medication to control their conditions. And I've seen some people describe it as that is, you know, people with mental health problems is the equivalent of people with cancer only getting treatment when they're stage four and terminal. You know, that's 20% of the cases that I see, that I think could be prevented, you know, and that's year on year on year. Since Jonathan Zito's death in 1992, there have been more than 700 official inquiries in the UK into deaths in the community where mental health was a factor. 